Good morning. Great to see you all again. Yeah, great to have you back. We're going to uh, do part three of uh, some devotions on Romans 8, uh, 18 to 27. Jen's just going to read to us the last part of the passage again now. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jen. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Mm. Over the last couple of days, we've seen that as Christians in times of trial, we must look forward to heaven, but must also wait. Though we might find ourselves in certain circumstances saying, Lord, bring it on, God has his perfect time. And so we live in hope as Christians. It's certain hope, but we must wait for it patiently. But do we have help while we wait? Well, in fact, we do. In verse 26 of Romans 8, Paul says, In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. I don't know about you, but I love verse 26. The Spirit helps us in our weakness. Do you ever feel weak? I can imagine that plenty of people feel weak at the moment. Uh, I was speaking with Margaret Martin the other day and she asked us to pray for her granddaughter, Katie. She's a physiotherapist in the UK at the moment, working in Oxford. Uh, she's been on the front line fighting to keep those critically ill with coronavirus alive. She says it's a bit of a nightmare. The long hours, the stress, the tiredness, the grief, it's relentless. Now my guess is that there's many Christian workers feeling stretched to their limit right now. But when we feel at our weakest, this verse says that the Spirit helps us in our weakness. How does he help us? He helps us to pray. Look again at verse 26. The Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. So the weakest Lord help me prayer is made effective by the Spirit as he intercedes for us. The faintest Lord strengthen me prayer is heard by God with the help of the Spirit. Even a wordless groan can be taken usefully to God with the help of the Spirit. How does that work? Verse 27 tells us, And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. The one who searches our hearts is God himself, according to the psalmist. Remember Psalm 139? Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. God knows us. He knows our situation. He knows our anxious thoughts. And he knows the mind of the Spirit because God the Father, Son and Spirit are one. And so the Spirit intercedes for us as God's people in accordance with the will of God. So these verses are saying, in summary, that the Spirit helps us in our weakness. He takes our frail, frail cries for help and turns them into prayers that are used to bring about God's good purpose, regardless of circumstance. What a relief that is. Because the reality is that I often feel weak when times are tough. I often wonder if God's hearing my prayer when, when life gets dark. And sometimes I even struggle to pray. But God has given us his spirit to help us in our weakness. He takes even the faintest cry and brings it to God the Father in accordance with his will to accomplish his good purpose and plan. Well, it's good news, isn't it? Indeed, all of this passage from Romans 8, 18 to 27 is great news. And particularly relevant for the times we live in at the moment. It reminds us that pandemics like COVID-19 are part and parcel of living in a fallen world that's groaning, longing for redemption. 
It reminds us too that as Christians we're not immune from suffering in a world fractured by sin like the rest of humanity. We groan with it. And it reminds us to keep present sufferings in perspective in the light of the future glory that's ours through faith in Jesus. So may God strengthen us all to live in hope, to wait patiently and to keep praying with the help of the Spirit. Thanks for joining us again today. We'll see you on Monday.